Well, today I want to show you my weekly riparium maintenance routine and uh, talk about how I deal with water testing, water changes, and also want to update you on some of the tanks that I featured in previous videos. And we'll also take a look and talk about how these riparian plants are making a big difference in keeping my tanks healthy and low maintenance. The first thing we're going to do is test the water on the 29 gallon, the little beta jar, and then the uh, neon tetra tank. And that's what I always do before anything is just test the water. That uh, lets me know if I need to do a water change or just top off the uh, levels from the evaporation. And I just use the uh, Tetra Easy Strips for testing the water. That may not be the quote unquote professional way to do it, but you know it's it works for me. So we're gonna we're just gonna dip it, give it a few minutes or give it a minute. I think is the what the label recommends. So that's the 29 gallon. We're gonna do the better jar and last but not least tetra tank now the main thing i'm looking for when i do a water test is just to make sure the nitrate levels are not excessive and make sure the nitrite is you know non-existent pretty much so um, this is the 29 gallon tank and you know the nitrates are pretty low i know the color may be hard to see on this on this video but um, and this is the the beta jar it's pretty low and then this is the tetra uh, tank so they're all pretty low i may just do a water change a small water change on the tetra tank it's still a pretty new setup and um, i have been able to cut back a good a good bit on the water changes since the peace lily started growing i've noticed the nitrates have been much lower much much more stable over a longer period of time so i've gone from a one week water change to a two week water change. This neon tetra tank is a black water setup so I'm trying to keep a lower pH. I'm using distilled water to replenish with after a water change and to top off with and I also try not to change more than 10 percent of the water at a time in order to keep as much of the tannins as possible. You can see how well those peach lilies are doing. Those roots are really stretching out there beyond the planter into the water. And uh, some of them, uh, well, yeah, some of them are about to reach the bottom. So I'm going to let them grow into the substrate. The frog bit has not been doing as well. I think it's because it's not, they're not getting enough light. And, uh, and it, may, it may just not be enough nitrates in the water, too, to support very many uh, frog bit. If you remember, I did put some cuttings of pothos in the back, and those ended up dying. Um, it's like the first time that's ever happened. And I'm thinking what happened was they were they were from the greenhouse. They've been growing out there in the greenhouse for a while, and then I, I moved them inside. So there's a noticeable drop in temperature from outdoors to indoors and um, different water parameters. I think it just stressed them out and they didn't make it. Um, right now I'm trying a heartleaf philodendron and that has not been rooted yet. I just took a cutting so I'm going to try to root it in this water to see if that makes a difference. So now that tank is done let's move on to the 29 gallon. Uh, with, with this one today I think I'm going to take out a good bit of the pothos that I have growing underwater. Um, it's, it's really starting to shade out a lot of the plants below it and I'm really wanting that water wisteria uh, to fill in and it look, it's looking like it's getting pretty leggy and um, and the light competition is pretty stiff here too. I don't have a, an overhead tank light right now. I, I only have uh, the clip-on uh, work lights which it's been working fine you know for these for the pothos and the peace lily and and for the um, the Amazon sword that's back there and the, um, and the Italian Val but uh, eventually I do want to get an LED light to go over the top of this tank but for now I think I'm going to take out some of this pothos and um, just allow more light to get down into the tank and then I'm going to top off the water level since I don't need to do a water change. I was amazed that even in the short period of time that I was letting the pothos grow underwater 
it had managed to sprout roots uh, and the roots had made their way down into the substrate. I definitely want to uh, try growing the pothos like this again, just in a larger tank where it has more room. So now I've got the water topped off and got the pothos cut back a good bit. It's already letting a good bit more light in to that water wisteria. And, uh, and the dwarf sage down here needs some light for sure. It's, it's slowly dying out in some places. So hopefully I can get that, uh, that aquarium light pretty soon and help these plants out. So now we're going to do just general maintenance on uh, some of the, the riparian plants here. And there's not much to it, really. I mean, these plants are so easy. There's a few leaves I'm going to take off, like these older leaves that start getting discolored around the margins. Um, I'll go ahead and take those off. And then uh, that way it allows the energy from, from the plant can go to the new leaves. Uh, for the pothos, really, I'm just going through and looking for for dead leaves or almost dead leaves and uh, not much going on here. And just to update you guys uh, on this on the substrate, you know, a few weeks ago I did uh, I did a video on how to add sand to an existing aquarium, and um, so I put a, a couple inches of sand in the bottom, and it's it's been transitioning very well. Um, I did water changes, I don't know, a couple times a week for the first week, and now it's really starting to, to stabilize. So that's a good thing. It, it's happened a lot quicker than I thought it would. Sometimes it takes you know, more than just a week, but I really think uh, covering half of the substrate like I showed in the video, and then waiting a week and covering the other half, I think that makes a huge difference in th just the impact on the, the biological filtration. Um, you know, if you cover, like I said in the video, if you cover all of the substrate at one time, then you're, it's like you're smothering all of the beneficial bacteria that's living in the top layer of the substrate. You're, you know, you're smothering it all at one time, and then it, uh, you know, has to play catch up. But just do, I think doing half of it first, waiting a week, and doing the other half really helped out with that. Went ahead and did a small water change on the beta jar. Uh, one thing I've really been impressed by is how fast the Marimo moss balls have been growing. I mean, they've probably doubled in size in the past month. It's been about four weeks, I think, since I set this up. And uh, I pulled them from another tank and just, just put them in there. And uh, yeah, man, they've, they've really been growing a lot faster than I thought. So that's pretty cool. Frog bit's doing pretty well, I think, in this jar. I've had to thin it out a few times and uh, I know some of these plants, like the water wisteria, are, you know, they're going to overgrow this jar at some point. I've already trimmed them back twice, I think. But um, I'm really, you know, this is kind of an experiment just to see you know, which plants uh, that I have, you know, could adapt to a small tank size like this. And I've even got some Italian Val growing in there, and uh, of course it's winding around the top, as you can see. Well, now we're going to take a look at both of the beta tanks in my son's rooms. And then after that, we're going to move on to the 75-gallon riparian. So here we are in my oldest son's room, and he has a very ordinary beta tank. And earlier this year, I put a couple of pothos cuttings in the top. Well, since the cuttings rooted, I have not done any water changes to this tank. I've only topped off. And I test the water probably once a month. I should probably do it more often. I test the water and um, have, have done a test today and the nitrates are extremely low. So all I'm going to do is just top off the water level. And uh, this is a good example of how well pothos can act as a water purifier in a tank. Now given this is a 10 gallon tank and it has a very low bio load. I mean there's only this beta contributing to the waste but I still think it's very fascinating. It's a good experiment to see how well pothos can purify the water. So I'll top off the tank. There's a dead leaf in there I need to get out, but other than that, I'm just going to leave it alone. We are now in my younger son's room, and this is his riparium that's been featured in a few different videos. And uh, man, all those riparian plants are doing so well. The uh, Neanthabella palm in particular, is just flourishing. Um, probably need to thin that out. I think I've been saying that for a while now. And um, anyway, I just tested the water 
and it's been a long time coming but I think it's time to do a partial water change those nitrates are creeping up there so gosh the last time I did a water change on this I can't remember it's got a few more fish there's four fish total three guppies and a betta and even with all these plants you know there's going to be a time at some point where you have to change water but the fact that it's been months since I've changed this water I don't mind at all I still think this uh, riparium is a tremendous success well, here we are at the 75 gallon riparium I'm going to do a water test first unplug my hang on the back filter and clean off the the sponge pre-filter the flow of the hang on the back starting to uh, slow down a good bit so that means it's time to just rinse this out squeeze it out once or twice it's still in the, the safe zone I guess for the nitrates of course ideally nitrates would stay lower than that but and you can see how high the pH is I mean it's almost <laughs> it's almost off the chart so one of the most helpful tools and cheapest tools that I use uh, for you know cleaning out algae and just picking through whatever I need to in the tank is you know a couple of uh, bamboo skewers like shish kebab skewers and I just zip tie them together you know can't beat the zip tie technology right so this is these are really helpful when I do clean out algae I can just go down in there and uh, if you just kind of twirl the, the skewer around in your hand that algae will just wrap around the very tip of the uh, skewer and it just makes it so much easier I might I'm gonna see if I can demonstrate this for you one-handed while shooting video I gotta be careful not to get roots from the riparian plants but if you can just get it tease it away from the roots or whatever it's clinging to and just keep uh, twisting just comes right off just like that so there's there's an example of how I do that so now we're going to go through and check all of the riparian plants and again on the pothos you're just taking out dead leaves or yellowing leaves now on the umbrella sedge the stems that are really tall you know reach the light that's usually when I'll trim I'll remove some of those and of course there's always new ones coming up but ever since the the video that I did where I uh, replaced my peace lily and some other things with with these uh, new riparian plants these have been doing pretty well uh, the Chinese evergreen has started putting on new leaves and um, I had two plants that died I had some Fetonia right here in this open spot it died and then unfortunately the polka dot plant in the back died and uh, everything else is doing pretty well I've noticed with Fetonia and polka dot plant whenever I try to move them inside uh, from growing in the greenhouse moving them inside it's almost like it's too much of a shock for them and they usually um, are they either wilt really bad or in this case they didn't make it so I'll have to do some more um, experimenting with that to see if I can't improve on that situation but yeah I'm really trying to decide what to do long term with this pothos because it's already grown up to the top uh, of the chain and now it's uh, coming back down again <laughs> so you know I could I could train it to grow on either side on this pole but that's also where I tend to you know to hang other potted plants and hanging baskets uh, in the winter time bring them in from outdoors as far as the submerged plants um, I'm trying to get this water wisteria to to, to fill in and it's man it's really grown a lot since I moved it in here and you can tell I've got two different levels of it I'm keeping the, the front part of it trimmed down kind of low to try to keep it more of a mid to foreground size plant and I'm letting this in the back grow up uh, Italian Val has started to spread 
it was only in this group here but now it's spreading outward so that's a good sign i do have some string algae hang that you know hangs out in this corner and uh and some in the other corner as well kind of behind the, the the italian valve and i try to keep it manageable i don't i'm not trying to eradicate the string algae necessarily um, to me it's helpful it, as long as it's not growing out of control you know if it stays in smaller groups then that you know that's beneficial for the tank it's a you know possible food source for fish and snails um, but it's also a good a good uh, gauge for me like if I start to see it getting out of control then I know it's time to do a water change for sure I've got an a Ponageton growing here that's supposed to be a Madagascar lace but I'm not sure it looks more like the Ulvaceus so far but it's still pretty young we'll see so how yeah it that's just kind of a quick look at my uh, you know basic maintenance schedule for some of my repariums here and uh, as you can see there's not a whole lot more involved than just keeping up a fish tank but anyway hopefully you found some things useful and thank you so much for watching uh, don't forget to like and share this video and hit the subscribe button if you have not joined already. And I'll see you next time. And remember, it's all about the plants.